Les souvenirs que moi j'ai, c'est surtout de voir nos frères qui sont tués comme des bêtes. Leur cœur était gorgé de haine, qui se sont levés et qui coupaient leurs semblables avec des couteaux, avec des machettes. Personne ne pouvait entendre la voix de la raison. C'est comme si se nourrissent de la violence. On marche dans le sang pour arriver au pouvoir. Il y a une telle pauvreté et une telle misère qu'aujourd'hui, tout est prétexte à crise, tout est prétexte à règlement de compte, tout est prétexte à vengeance. Since the end of 2012, the Central African Republic, a small and very poor landlocked country of 4.5 million, has been convulsed by civil war and sectarian violence. A struggle over political power, land and resources now sees mainly Christian militia groups known as anti-Balaka, pitted against a mostly Muslim militia known as ex selika <laughs> Nearly half a million people are displaced. Almost 200,000, including most of the country's Muslims, have fled the country. And tens of thousands, like Aisha Amadou, are trapped in enclaves, unable to escape. This is the very outer limit of a district called Pekasank in the nation's capital, Bangui. Aisha is one of the few thousand Muslims left in the city. She says she can't take a single step further. Now Aisha, whose husband was killed in the fighting, ekes out her life in a tent, totally dependent on aid. Neither she nor her daughter can get to a hospital, which are largely run by hostile anti-Balaka elements. Aisha is not alone. Not far away, 20,000 Christians live in this miserable displacement camp alongside the country's main airport. Stranded people and planes making bizarre bedfellows. This ruined aircraft used to belong to the country's self-styled Emperor Bacassa, a dictator from the 70s, a reminder of decades of instability. People here fled violence in the city, and now many of their homes are destroyed. J'avais entendu parler de cette crise, mais l'ampleur de cette crise m'a vraiment impressionné. In the midst of this, independent expert Marie-Thérèse Keita Bukum, appointed by the United Nations Human Rights Council, arrives in the country for her fourth visit. Here she confers with Muslim representatives in Pekasank. Her task is to monitor and make recommendations on the human rights situation in the country. Depuis un an et demi, la crise a explosé. Toute la population en souffre. Et vous voyez sur le visage des gens la souffrance. Et je crois que c'est cela le rôle aussi de la communauté internationale. La restauration de l'autorité de l'État à l'intérieur et un appui à la sécurité. Marie-Thérèse travels the country to assess the crisis. Here she goes east to Beberati. A human rights officer from the UN peacekeeping mission MINUSCA provides support. Il est important que l'on dépasse le stade de prise de conscience. Aujourd'hui, je pense que la prise de conscience est là, elle est plus ou moins généralisée. Maintenant, il faut que nous passions aux actes. The government has very limited influence beyond the capital. Effectively, much of the country has been divided up into lawless fiefdoms controlled by local militias, with criminality driving much of the violence rather than religion. For many, the only protection comes from the United Nations. UN and other international peacekeepers were deployed after the current crisis erupted. In Beberati, Marie-Thérèse meets first of all with the mayor, but the real power lies with these anti-Balaka militia leaders who arrive halfway through her meeting. Marie-Thérèse visits a local prison. The mayor has assured her there are no women prisoners, but... Et mais ce qui était le plus frappant, c'est de voir toutes ces personnes réunies dans une seule cellule et surtout de voir une femme dans la même cellule que les hommes. Et plus marquant, ces détenus n'avaient rien à manger. 
n'avait absolument rien à manger. And not only is there a woman, there's a 15-year-old boy. Both have been accused of witchcraft by an anti-Balaka leader. There's been a spate of such accusations recently. It's allegedly to settle scores and intimidate opponents. Tout le monde a des droits. Les accusés ont des droits aussi, notamment le droit d'être jugé, le droit à un procès équitable. After her intervention, human rights officers with the UN mission follow up with the local magistrate and secured the release of both woman and teenager. It's a tiny step forward in the monumental task of changing the dynamic, back towards peacetime normality and the rule of law. In Bambari, Marie-Thérèse confronts these ex celica leaders over human rights abuses committed in their area of control. She then investigates the situation at Yalake, northwest of the capital. Several hundred Muslims from the pastoralist Pearl tribe have been trapped here since early 2014. They fled attacks by anti-Balaka militia, who are now preventing them from moving on. 46, including many children, have died here, often from malnutrition, exacerbated by psychological trauma. This baby has just been admitted to the local clinic. As well as international attention, the situation at Yaloke has brought courageous intervention from inside the country. There were the anti-Balaka, who have constated that in one of our vehicles, there were the people who cried and the others arrived with the couteaux. The Catholic Archbishop of Mangui, Dieudonné Nzapalenga, traveled to Yaloke to organize aid. He agreed to bring a sick girl and her family back to the capital. But on the edge of the city, his car was surrounded by an angry mob. There was a young man who came in a fury, in a anger, aggressive. It was their chef. But I believe, as a man of God, I believe in a miracle. This man came and said, I see the anger, the hate. The desire of vengeance in your heart, in your heart, come here to receive the benediction. He didn't want it. I put my hand on him, on his head. I put my hand on him, on him, on him, on him, saying, we're going to kill him a little bit. I came out of the car. He started to cry, don't kill him. And this young man that I have been blessed, it's him who also cried with me. Don't kill him. The mob wanted to kill the family and the archbishop himself, simply because he was helping Pearl Muslims. He succeeded in bringing the girl and her family back to his residence in Bangui, where they're now living safely under his care. Archbishop Nzapalenga and other religious leaders are major voices for reconciliation in the country and key allies for Marie-Thérèse's efforts. This platform religious is an element very important, an example of solidarity, of the value of the human being and of the respect of its rights. The Archbishop's mission includes frequently distributing aid in displaced people's camps in the capital. Some of the camps are full of Christian militia. A fairly high proportion here are criminals who joined in the fighting opportunistically. The atmosphere is highly volatile. Murder, rape and robbery are frequent in these camps. Au plus profond de nous-mêmes, dans nos cœurs enfouis, existent des situations que nous avons vécues et que parfois the Archbishop believes that the route to a new era for the country can only pass through a deep, honest and shared accounting of what happened. On peut se tromper, on peut faire du mal. Peut-être que vous, vous n'avez pas tué mon père, on vous a mandaté. Vous l'avez confessé. Vous avez dit de vos propres bouches que vous avez tué, je suis libéré. Je peux maintenant faire mon deuil. Et c'est là où la réconciliation pourrait avoir son sens. In a practical demonstration of reconciliation, the Archbishop protected an Imam who had to flee for his life after fighting broke out in his district. Imam Kobin Layama lived in the Archbishop's residence for several months and still stays close by. Certainement, il y a des gens dans la communauté musulmane qui ont pensé que le fait d'être accueilli par mon frère, mon Seigneur, c'est de l'apostasie. Mais il leur a toujours répondu que. Dans notre religion, la religion nous a jamais demandé de prendre pour ennemi euh, les, frères, les frères chrétiens. Imam Kabin Layama, the archbishop and other religious leaders have traveled abroad seeking support for the country. And here at home, the power of the archbishop's message resonates as he holds mass in a local church. 
Despite these efforts, Marie-Thérèse recognizes that many are currently very pessimistic about the future of the Central African Republic. People like Aisha see few reasons for optimism. In an effort to change that dynamic, the UN has helped organize nationwide consultations for reconciliation. Marie-Thérèse is one of the experts of the Special Procedure System of the Human Rights Council, who work unpaid to protect and promote rights around the globe. After her visit, she delivers her recommendations to the Council in Geneva. La République centrafricaine a ce moment clé où elle se prépare pour des élections présidentielles qui devraient permettre la fin de la transition. For Marie-Thérèse and for those who work for reconciliation, international support is crucial. But ultimately, they believe, the citizens of the Central African Republic themselves have to work together to build a future. Les ressortissants de ce pays, les Centrafricains eux-mêmes, doivent avoir un sursaut national, un sursaut sur eux-mêmes. C'est leur pays. Nous venons les aider, nous les aidons avec beaucoup d'amour et beaucoup de plaisir. Mais eux-mêmes doivent commencer ce sursaut. Et je suis sûre aussi que la communauté, devant justement cette prise de conscience, devant ce sursaut, devant cette volonté d'aller de l'avant, viendra certainement apporter son aide pour que chacun comprenne que celui qui est à côté est son frère et qu'il n'y a pas d'autre endroit où il puisse aller que la République centrafricaine.